Her words of wisdom gave us strength in the most testing times. During the darkest moments of the pandemic, she gave us hope that we would meet again. She knew this generation of Britons would be as strong as any. And as we meet today, we remember the pledge she made on her 21st birthday to dedicate her life to service. The whole house will agree. Never has a promise been so completely fulfilled. Her devotion to duty remains an example to us all. She carried out thousands of engagements. She took a red box every day. She gave her assent to countless pieces of legislation and was at the heart of our national life for seven decades. The Supreme Governor of the Church of England, she drew on her deep faith. She was the nation's greatest diplomat. Her visits to post-apartheid South Africa and to the Republic of Ireland showed a unique ability to transcend difference and heal division. In total, she visited well over 100 countries. She met, she, she met more people than any other monarch in our history. She gave counsel to prime ministers and ministers across government. I have personally greatly valued her wise advice. Only last October, I witnessed firsthand how she charmed the world's leading investors at Windsor Castle. She was always so proud of Britain and always embodied the spirit of our great country. She remained determined to carry out her duties, even at the age of 96. It was just three days ago at Balmoral that she invited me to form a government and become her 15th Prime Minister. Again, she generously shared with me her deep experience of government, even in those last days. Everyone who met her will remember the moment. They will speak of it for the rest of their lives. Even those who never met her, her late Majesty's image is an icon for what Britain stands for as a nation, on our coins, on our stamps, and in portraits around the world. Her legacy will endure through the countless people she met, the global history she witnessed, and the lives that she touched. She was loved and admired by people across the United Kingdom and across the world. One of the reasons for that affection was her sheer humanity. She reinvented monarchy for the modern age. She was a champion of freedom and democracy around the world. She was dignified, but not distant. She was willing to have fun, whether on a mission with 007 or having tea with Paddington Bear. She brought the monarchy into people's lives and into people's homes. During her first televised Christmas message in 1957, she said, today we need a special kind of courage so we can show the world that we are not afraid of the future. We need that courage now. In an instant yesterday, our lives changed forever. Today, we show the world that we do not fear what lies ahead. We send our deepest sympathy to all members of the royal family. We pay tribute to our late queen and we offer loyal service to our new king. Amen. His Majesty, King Charles III, bears an awesome responsibility that he now carries for all of us. I was grateful to speak to His Majesty last night and offer my condolences. Even as he mourns, his sense of duty and service is clear. He has already made a profound contribution through his work on conservation, education, and his tireless diplomacy. We owe him our loyalty and devotion. The British people, the Commonwealth, and all of us in this house will support him as he takes our country forward to a new era of hope and progress, our new Carolean age. The crown endures, our nation endures, and in that spirit, I say, God save the King. I now call the Leader of the Opposition, Keir Starmer. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today, our country, our people, this House are united in mourning. Queen Elizabeth II was this great country's greatest monarch. And for the vast majority of us, it feels impossible to imagine a Britain without her. All our thoughts are with her beloved family, our royal family, at this moment of profound grief. This is a deep and private loss for them. Yet it's one we all share, because Queen Elizabeth created a special personal relationship with us all. That relationship was built on the attributes that defined her reign, her total commitment to service and duty, her deep devotion to the country, the Commonwealth, and the people she loved. In return for that, we loved her. And it is because of that great shared love that we grieve today. For the 70 glorious years of her reign, our Queen was at the heart of this nation's life. She did not simply reign over us. She lived alongside us. She shared in our hopes and our fears, our joy and our pain, our good times and our bad. Our Queen played a crucial role as the thread between the history we cherish and the present we own. A reminder that our generational battle against the evil of fascism or the emergence of a new Britain out of the rubble of the Second World War do not only belong to the past, but are the inheritance of each and every one of us. A reminder that the creativity, the hard work, the enterprise that has always defined this nation is as abundant now as it ever was. A reminder that the prospect of a better future still burns brightly. Never was this link more important than when our country was plunged into lockdown at the start of the pandemic. Her simple message that we would see family again, that we would see friends again, that we would be together again, gave people strength and courage when they needed it most. But it wasn't simply the message that allowed a shaken nation to draw upon those reserves. It was the fact that she was the messenger. COVID closed the front doors of every home in the country. It made our lives smaller and more remote. But she was able to reach beyond that, to reassure us and steal us. At the time we were most alone, at a time we'd been driven apart, she held the nation close in a way no one else could have done. Yeah. Yeah. For that, we say thank you. On the occasion of the Queen's Silver Jubilee in 1977, Philip Larkin wrote of her reign, in times when nothing stood but worsened or grew strange, there was one constant good, she did not change. It feels like we are once again in a moment in our history where, as Larkin put it, things are growing strange, where everything is spinning, a nation requires a still point. When times are difficult, it requires comfort. And when direction is hard to find, it requires leadership. The loss of our Queen robs this country of its stillest point, its greatest comfort, at precisely the time we need those things most. But our Queen's commitment to us, her life of public service, was underpinned by one crucial understanding, that the country she came to symbolise is bigger than any one individual or any one institution. It is the sum total of all our history and all our endeavours, and it will endure. The late Queen would have wanted us to redouble our efforts, to turn our collar up and face the storm, to carry on. Most of all, she would want us to remember that it is in these moments 
that we must pull together. This House is a place where ideas and ideals are debated. Of course that leads to passionate disagreement. Of course temperatures can run high. But we all do it in pursuit of something greater. We do it because we believe we can make this great country and its people greater still. At this moment of uncertainty, where our country feels caught between a past it cannot relive and a future yet to be revealed, we must always remember one of the great lessons of our Queen's reign, that we are always better when we rise above the petty, the trivial, the day-to-day, -day, to focus on the things that really matter, the things that unite us, rather than those which divide us. Yeah. Our Elizabethan age may now be over, but her legacy will live on forever. And as the children of that era, it falls upon us to take that legacy forward, to show the same love of country, the love of one another, as she did. To show empathy and compassion, as she did. And to get Britain through this dark night and bring it into the dawn, as she did. We join together today not just to say goodbye to our Queen, to share in our mourning, but to say something else important. God save the King, because as one era ends, so another begins. King Charles III has been a devoted servant of this country his entire life. He has been a powerful voice for fairness and understood the importance of the environment long before many others. As he ascends to his new role, with the Queen Consort by his side, the whole house, indeed the whole country, will join today to wish him a long, happy and successful reign. Yeah. Mr Speaker, the emotions we see across the nation today are echoed across the Commonwealth to which our Queen was so committed, in the church to which our Queen was so devoted, and in the armed forces which she led and her family served. Around the world, people will be united in mourning for her passing and united in celebrating her life. We've already seen beautiful tributes flow from across the world. It will be impossible to capture them all here. But each one is a reminder of the esteem in which she was held, of what she achieved on behalf of her country, of the shared values we treasure. The reason our loss feels so profound is not just because she stood at the head of our country for 70 years, but because, in spirit, she stood amongst us. As we move forward, as we forge a new path, as we build towards a better future, she will always be with us. For all she gave us and all she will continue to give us, we say thank you. May our Queen rest in peace. God save the King. God save the King.